Annalise Hoag, and as I was listening to the incredible, rich portfolio of all of the speakers that precede me, I had this tune going through my head. Anyone here remember Schoolhouse Rock? Any of those? I kept thinking, I'm just a Jew, yeah, I'm only a Jew. And the reason for that is that my, while my progressive political resume is long, when I stand here before you today, I stand here as a Jew. I've not been involved in progressive Jewish politics the way all the speakers that I follow have. And that's really important for what I have to say today. Anyone here ever see the movie Milk? about Harvey Milk in San Francisco, really great, really, really, really powerful movie. For me, one of the most incredible scenes of that movie was when Sean Penn, playing Harvey Milk, gathered all of his core community together in a living room after a political loss and said to them, I figured out what our obstacle to victory is. I have it now. It's that until every American knows that they know one of us, we will never win. When I got the call from Corinne, Corinne to be on this panel, sorry, Corinne, um, to be on this panel, my mind went to that scene. My mind went to that scene because I'm not out. I'm not out as a J Street supporter. So I went to the same place that that man in that scene went to when Harvey Milk handed him the telephone and said, call your parents now. Tell them that you're out. I felt that same determination that now was the time to speak up and that same terrified feeling that I could be rejected by those I most love. I'm not a shy person. I don't scare easily. I was the political advocacy and communications director for moveon.org for six years. I got my fair share of fights. I have... I have negotiated with bank CEOs for stronger environmental standards on their lending policies. I have stood my ground when right-wing radical activists have shouted down Congress people supporting the health care law in town halls in 2009. None of that stuff has scared me as much as standing here right today with you all right now with the cameras rolling and the tweeters tweeting and saying, I'm out, I'm a J Street supporter. I come from a very conservative Jewish Texan family. I love my parents. They're wonderful people. I get my activism from them. My mom was the president of the JCC in Dallas. My dad was the president of the Federation. Some of my earliest memories are of my mom being very involved in Operation Moses, airlifting Ethiopian Jews to save them from famine. My dad, in his role as the president of the Holocaust Museum in Dallas, has expanded the content of that museum from the persecution of Jews in World War II to include the persecution of African Americans in Texas in the Civil Rights Movement. I'm very proud of them. My parents, as well as most of our tight-knit Jewish community in Texas, are also APAC supporters. They do lobby days in Dallas, and they are that 7% that you hear about where Israel does decide their vote in elections. Because I love my parents, I have made sure to avoid this topic at all costs in my progressive activism. I have not wanted to go there to disappoint them, to make them sad, to make them want to reject me. But I love Israel. I love Israel with all my heart. The family lore has it that when I was a child and they took me, I didn't sleep for two weeks straight because I was so invigorated by my surroundings and I didn't want to miss a single thing. I love Israel the way you can when you go when you're 16 and you're free from your parents' grasp for the first time because you're on the teen tour and you get to go out and experience things on your own. I fell in love with Israel when I fell in love for the first time with a boy in Israel, drinking Maccabi beers and dancing at the nightclubs in Tiberias. Anyone been there? <laughs> you spin me right round, baby, right round. That was the tune that will always remind me of Israel and my first boyfriend. It will always take me back there. 
I remember being young and playing hide and seek in the old city inside the Dung Gate with my Israeli cousins and teaching them how to shout, come out, come out wherever you are, as we ran along the twisty turns in the stone walls. I remember watching my older cousins bargain in the shook. It was a sport. I wanted to learn it. I wanted to be as exciting and passionate as my Israeli cousins. It was such a contrast to the sh safety of my strip mall existence back in Texas. I love Israel with everything I have. And because I love Israel, I can't not notice that the range is getting smaller, that when American teen tours go, they don't go to the Shuk as much. They're not free to wander the Arab quarter. Many of them don't go to Bethlehem anymore. And the place that I used to go when I was in my mid-20s and went back to study ecology in the Galil at Mount Maron, the nightclub I like to hang out with in, in, in Tel Aviv, where they played Grateful Dead tunes, that was bombed. That was bombed several years ago. It's no longer there. I can't help but notice that we're retracting, that we've taken the unprecedented step of trading one soldier for thousands of Palestinians, emboldening Hamas and undercutting Fatah. And I can't help but notice when I talk to, when I do venture into political terrain with my Israeli and my American family, that hope seems to be retreating and everybody seems to be hunkering down. And it is for this reason that I'm here today. I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert on this issue at all. Everybody who will speak here this weekend and this week will be more of an expert than me. And I have probably already belied my novice stature by some of the language I've chosen to use in this talk. It's part of what's kept me silent. That nuance, that sophistication that's required to avoid the political and rhetorical landmines that we don't even know we've hit until we step on them. That's what's kept me silent. But I can't be silent anymore because I understand that in order to secure the future of Israel so that my nieces can go back and create the kinds of memory, experience the magic of floating in the Dead Sea and the power of watching the sunrise over Masada. We cannot continue with the status quo. We have to open an honest conversation. And opening an honest conversation requires us to challenge the conventional wisdom that questioning, questioning in itself is heresy. And in order, in order to achieve the questions and the open dialogue, we all need to go somewhere where we fear to tread. When we're in rooms like this, it's really easy to feel like we're the majority. But I know I'm not the only one who has to go home and get nervous and have my heart clutch when I have to have this conversation. But it's more important than ever to walk to the Seder table, to walk into the living rooms, to walk in the communities and say, I'm out. I am proud. I support J Street and I support an incredibly open conversation so we can secure a safe future for Israel. I am the future of pro-Israel, and I invite you to join me and come out, come out wherever you are. <laughs>